بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد. Today we're going to go through and survey a hadith about which Imam Al Nawawi رحمه الله تعالى said هذه من أرجى أرجى الأحاديث لهذه الأمة وأرجاها. He said this hadith is one of the most inspiring or hopeful for this ummah and in fact probably the most hopeful hadith for this ummah. So hadith Imam Muslim in his Sahih in Kitab al-Iman relates in the chapter he entitles Bab Dua in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam li ummatihi wa buka'ihi shafaqatan alayhim. Chapter entitled The Prayer or the Supplication of the Prophet for his ummah and his crying for his ummah out of his tenderness for towards them. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As reports, Anna al-Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tala qawla Allahi fi Ibrahim. Rabbi inna hunna adlalna kathiran min al-nas, faman tabi'ani fa innahu minni. Al-Aya. Wa qawla Isa alayhi salam, in tu'adhibuhum fa innahum ibaduk. وَإِن تَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ فَإِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ فَرَفَعْ يَدَيْهِ وَقَالْ So the Messenger of Allah وسلم, recited two verses in one of his nightly prayers. The first verse he recited in Surah Ibrahim is the statement of Ibrahim alayhi salam. O oh Allah, Rabbi إِنَّهُنَّ أَدْلَلْنَ كَثِيرًا مِنَ النَّاسِ They have deluded or cause many of your people to go astray. So what's the background of this verse? Ibrahim is speaking about his people. And this, this, this background is about the Ummah of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Before this verse, Allah says, وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ جَعَلْ هَذَا الْبَلَدَ آمِنًا وَجُنُوبْنِي وَبَنِيَّ أَنْ نَعْبُدَ الْأَصْنَامِ uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he said, Oh Allah, make this land a, a sanctuary, make this land a place of peace and protect my uh, progeny from worshipping idols. But in, in the next verse, Ibrahim says, O oh Allah, O oh my Lord, so many of them have gone astray. فَمَنْ تَبِعَنِي فَإِنَّهُ minni. He said, those among them who follow me, they are with me. فَإِنَّهُ uh, minni. And then the next verse that he recited, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is a statement of Isa Alayhi salam about his people. So Isa alayhi salam, he said, In tu'adhibhum fa innahum ibaduk. O Allah, if you punish them, then they are your slaves and servants. You have the right to do as you please. Wa in taghfir lahum fa inna kanta al-azizul hakim. But if you are forgiving towards them, you forgive them, then you are almighty, all wise. And this background of this surah, or this verse, is where Allah has a conversation with uh, Isa alayhi salam on the day of judgment and the conversation goes like this وَإِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَى بْنَ مَرْيَمْ أَنْتَ قُلْتَ لِلنَّاسِ اتَّخِذُونِي وَأُمِّيَ إِلَهَيْنِ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ Allah will say, Ya Isa ibn Maryam, are you the one who told people to take you or your mother as gods beside Allah? And it's a long conversation but towards the end of the conversation uh, Isa alayhi salam, he gives up and he says, I mean, obviously he says, I am not the one to do that. But he says, if you punish them, it's your right. They are your servants. But if you forgive them, then you're almighty or wise. So both of these prophets, for their people, they had tremendous like love. Because every prophet is sent to their own people. And they want their people to be guided. So Ibrahim, even though he knows many of his people went into idolatry, shirk, idol worship. He still has some hope that Allah will forgive them. And then Isa alayhi salam, even though people took him as gods and his mother, and we know what happened with the Christian faith, but he still says something like this that has a hope that perhaps Allah may forgive them. So our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he read both of these verses and he began to cry. So he raised his hands while reciting these verses and he said, Allahumma, oh my Lord, what about my ummah? My ummah. And he kept saying that and he began to cry, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
So you can imagine he's reciting verses, speaking about the previous prophets and the, among their followers, those who went astray. And it inspires him to think about his own ummah and he became very emotional. It's kind of like when you hear a speech and people are talking about their children and then you start developing love for your own children or people are talking about their people or their community and you start thinking about your own community. So the, the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he began to weep and he began to cry and he spent the night crying. And not only did he cry, but he took action. He raised his hands, he made dua and he said, Allahumma ummati ummati. So you can find that in his most tender moments, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, often when he's crying the most, often the most emotional moments of his life, they always have one theme. It has to do with his people, his ummah. That's what inspired him. That's what made him emotional. That's what made him cry, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And then hadith continues, فَقَالَ اللَّهِ يَا جِبْرِيلِ اِذْهَبِ لَا مُحَمَّدُ وَرَبُّكَ أَعْلَمْ فَسَلْهُ مَا يُبْكِيكَ So Allah intervened and Allah asked Jibreel, Ya Jibreel, go to Muhammad and ask him what makes you weep. So now Allah intervenes. You can see the tenderness of the Prophet is concerned for his own ummah and his weeping and his crying. So Jibreel comes to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam فَأَتَاهُ جِبْرِيلِ فَسَأَلَهُ فَأَخْبَرَهُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ بِمَا قَالْ وَهُوَ أَعْلَمْ And the hadith says, and Allah knows all this. Allah sent Jibreel, he already knows. And then the, the, the messenger gave the answer to Jibreel, Allah already knows. And then فَقَالَ اللَّهِ يَا جِبْرِيلِ اِذْهَبِ لَا مُحَمَّدْ فَقُلْ so Allah says, Ya Jibreel, go back to Muhammad now. There's a second round. So Jibreel comes back and forms Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah says, Ya Jibreel, go back to Muhammad and tell him this. We will make you well pleased. We will make you happy concerning your ummah and we will never let you down. So this is the end of the hadith. Uh, of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam what do we learn from this? We learn so many things one of the things we learn when the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recited Quran he thought about the meanings he had tadabbur, he had reflection and when there were moments or when verses called for mercy he would ask for mercy but here verses he came across verses that spoke about the previous nations and inspired him to think about his own nation and you can see how much love he had for us, how much tenderness, how soft-hearted he was towards his ummah. He wasn't saying his ashab, his companions, his ummah includes each and every one of us. So he was crying for his whole, whole ummah until the end of time. It made him so emotional. He wanted all of us to be saved. So this is the love of the Prophet wasallam for us and his fear. These verses are speaking about those who disobey. So he was really scared. He was fearful about those Muslims who would go astray. And not only that, you see that he raised his hands. He called upon Allah Azza wa Jal. He made dua. Every moment of his life, he made dua for us. Can you imagine? You ask some uh, pious people, you ask the Imam to make dua for you. There are people that you know are better in Iman than you. You always ask them to make dua for you. But how many of us know the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was making dua for us all the time? In so many moments of his life, making dua that includes all, each and every one of us. And his dua began with Allahumma, raising his hands. He was so sincere in his dua, he was weeping. And he kept repeating the words, Ummati, Ummati, my umma, my umma. So if you think about this, how much love our Nabi has for us, there is no way you can really internalize this and still disobey and still not have love for our messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam there is a reason why in our in in there's there's a reason why the prophet said sallallahu alaihi wasallam la yu'minu ahadukum hatta akuna habbu ilayhi min walidihi wa waladihi wa nas ajma'in none of you will believe until i am more beloved to him or her than himself his parents his children all human beings because there's no one that has that kind of love for us there is no one that you know, cared for us this much and for our well-being and made dua for us like this. And more amazing than that, this is the tenderness of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
what about the love of Allah for his Nabi here? Look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded. You know, the Prophet raised his hands and then Allah responded immediately. He said immediately, the word is fa after that. Immediately he sent Jibreel. So Allah didn't respond directly. He sent his best angel. So he sent Jibreel because this was a special answer. Allah also loved the Nabi. And Allah also um, was, you know, he, Allah wanted to respond to his weeping, his tenderness, and console him and help him in this time of sorrow and distress. So he chose his best um, angel. And he sent angel not once but twice in a round of questioning. And Allah knows the answer. That's the emphasis here. Even though Allah knows the answer, he sends Jibreel to have this conversation in order for you know, the response to be even that, uh, that much stronger. So he sent Jibreel twice. He delivered good news. And all this happened immediately after the dua. Immediately. It wasn't some days later. It was immediately Jibreel came down. He found a weeping messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he talked to him. He asked him. He went back to Allah. And then Allah gave him such good news. And what good news is that? We will make you happy concerning your ummah. Allah didn't talk about specifics, but he, he gave the best answer he could, the most complete answer. We will make you happy concerning your ummah. We will not let you down. A double emphasis. So it's so amazing. And this answer, you know, if you look at in detail, first Allah says, Salhu, O Jibreel, go and ask him what makes him weep. But then the answer, he doesn't say, Qul lahu, say to him that we will make you well pleased. He just said, Faqul. The answer is much more direct. Just say, I will be there. I will make you happy concerning your ummah. We will make you happy concerning your ummah and never let you down. So these are the favors of our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam upon us. So amazing. When you think about this, this is one of the most hopeful verses if you think about this. And that's why Imam Nawawi said those words. This hadith and these verses are also related to another verse according to the Mufassirin. There is another um, verse that was revealed shortly thereafter with the same meaning. وَلَا سَوْفَ يُعْطِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَى In Surah Al-Duha, we will make you, uh, we will give you so much that you will be well pleased. So many Mufassirin felt this was revealed in this moment. And this was also the Bashara, the good news from Allah Azza wa Jal. Ali bin Abi Talib, he said, I'll end with that, he said, um, when he was a Khalifa, he said to the people of Iraq, Ya Ahla Iraq, Inna kum taquluna inna arja ayatin fi kitab Allah Azza wa Jal. He said, O oh, people of Iraq, you people believe that the most hopeful verse in the Quran, now he's discussing the most hopeful, the verse that has the most hope in the Quran. He says, You people believe the most hopeful verse is what? La taqnatu min rahmatillah. It's a verse, do not despair of the mercy of Allah. But he said, وَلَكِنَّا أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ نَقُولُ But we, the family of the Prophet wasallam. Why the family of the Prophet? Because the family of the Prophet knew him in a way perhaps other people did not. So they were close to him. They shared the same feelings and sentiment. He said, for us, the family of the Prophet, the most hopeful verse is وَلَا سَوْفَ يُعْطِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَى Allah will give you so much that you will be well pleased. Why? Because Ibn Abbas says, we know that the pleasure of the Messenger وسلم, is that each and every member of his ummah make it to paradise. That's what inspired him. That's what he wanted. May Allah inspire us to increase our love for the Messenger وسلم, May he inspire us to follow in his footsteps. May he inspire us to have love for the ummah like he had love for the ummah. May we love our brothers and sisters all across the world. May we make dua for them. May we help them in their circumstances. صلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الله يا الحمد لله بس الحمد لله يا مجاهد
ومرة في الأيام أنا بخير والحمد لله بفضل الله سبحانه وتعالى تشرب مية كثير في الليل الحمد لله رب العالمين كل شيء تمام